Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, maximum odd binary number. We're given a binary string S that contains at least a single one. And that's gonna be pretty important because we want to arrange the bits in such a way that the binary number is as large as it can be and it's also an odd number. And as you may know, you can't really have an odd number unless you have at least one bit because to make a binary number odd, all we have to say is that the least significant bit is going to be one. That guarantees that the number is gonna be odd because every other significant bit is gonna represent an even number. For example, this is gonna represent two, this represents four, this is eight, et cetera, et cetera. That's why we focus on this to make it odd. That's pretty much the entire problem. So let's take a look at some examples. You look at this example, zero, one, zero. This is the input string that we're given. We only have a single one. We are forced to put it in this spot and everything else is gonna be zero. So this is the largest number that we can get. And this is what we actually return in the form of a string. We don't have to convert this to an integer or anything like that. The second example is a bit more interesting. Here we have two ones. So we keep one of them here and then the other one where should we put it we have a choice we can either put it here or we can put it here or we can put it here well we're trying to maximize the result so of course we're going to put it in the most significant spot you can think of additional examples as having more ones and every time we have a choice we always want to fill the ones starting from the left position so if we had additional ones we'd put two of them here and then maybe a zero here and at least one of them is gonna go here. So conceptually, this problem isn't super crazy. One thing that we could do is just count the number of ones that we have, put one of them here, and then the remaining number, let's say the count represents how many we have, we subtract one from the count, and then we take this many, however many it happens to be, and start filling them in from the left. And the way I'm gonna do that, like the filling in portion, modifying a string generally creates a new string. So strings are immutable in most languages. I'm actually gonna use this count to construct a new string and then that's what we're gonna return. So that's one way I'm gonna solve the problem and then I'll show you another way after that. So I'm gonna have a variable to count the number of ones. Initially, it's gonna be zero and let's just leave a comment to make this descriptive. And then I'm gonna go through every character in S and I'm gonna say if C, that character is equal to one, let's go ahead and increment the number of ones. Now we could easily do this with a built-in function. I think we could have just assigned count equal to s dot count of one. That would have done the exact same thing, but I feel like for a problem this easy, it almost feels like cheating to use a built-in method like that. But I mean, if your interviewer allows it in a real interview, definitely go ahead and do that. Now that we have this, I want to construct the new string. What we know is that there's gonna be a portion of ones in the string, and then there's gonna be a, some portion of zeros, and then at the end, it's gonna have a one for sure. So let's start with that one for sure. It's gonna end with a one like this. Now, how many ones can we put over here? Well, it's gonna depend how many ones we have. And since we're already using one of them over here, we're gonna put count minus one, that many ones at the beginning. And in Python, it's really easy. You can actually do it like this. So this is the quantity, and then we're gonna multiply that by the string, which is one, and this will create that string, like this however many count minus one is. Lastly, how many zeros are gonna go in here? Well, it depends on the length of the input string. So let's say we have five ones, and we put one of them here and then the remaining four go there. Well, if the length of the input string like here is nine, then we want nine or the length of the string minus whatever the count happened to be. And that's how many zeros we want. We can take this quantity and then multiply it, whoops, by zero. And so this is a long formula, but it is basically building the string exactly in the form that we want it. So let's go ahead and run this. As you can see on the left, it works, it's pretty efficient, but there is another solution actually. If you are deeply familiar with the quicksort algorithm, specifically the portion of quicksort that is concerned with partitioning the array, this algorithm will be trivial for you. I talk about this, I think, in the DSA for Beginners course. Partition is a pretty important algorithm and it's relatively easy once you understand it. So the idea is this. 
Suppose we are given a string like this one. We're going to have a pointer. One pointer, let's say I, is going to be used to iterate over the array. Another pointer, I'm going to call it left, is going to tell us where we should insert the next one. So what this partition algorithm is going to do is it's going to take an input array like this one and convert it like this. It's going to put all the ones at the beginning and then all the zeros at the end. Now, we could achieve this if we wanted to via sort. But sort is something that runs typically in n log n time. But partitioning is more efficient. It's going to run in linear time. And that's possible because we know everything in the input is either a 1 or a 0. So we don't have to worry about like a continuous range of values. Once we have done this, this is not what we want, right? This is not the solution. We want to take at least one bit and put it here. Which one of these are we going to take? Of course, the least significant one. We're going to take this and swap it with this. First, we partition, and then we perform that last swap, and then we're good. Let me quickly show you how this algorithm is going to run. Starting here, we see it's a zero. Okay, so then we ignore it. We move our eye pointer over here. Left still stays over here. Left tells us where we're going to move the one to. Now we see a one. We're going to swap the values in these two indexes. So this is going to become a zero. This is going to become a one. Now our I pointer is going to be over here and our left pointer is going to be over here in the second spot because that's where the next one is going to go. This is a zero. So move I over here. This is a one. We're going to put one over there. We're kind of running out of space. And then the zero is going to end up over here. And now left is going to be in this spot. Let me kind of use a different color, I guess, to make this easier. But left is here. I is here. This is a zero. Don't worry about it. I is here now. One, swap it over here. And then this becomes zero. And then here we have a one. So if you were to retraw this in a cleaner way, you'd see that we've ended up with the string one, 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 zero, zero, zero. And our I pointer, first of all, would be out of bounds. So we are going to stop at that point. But our left pointer would be over here. So it's going to be right after the last one. It's possible that the entire input could have been all ones. In that case, our left pointer would be over here. It would be out of bounds. So always we're going to take left minus one. In the other case, it would be here, left is here. Left minus one is going to tell us this bit should be swapped with the last bit. And then once we perform that, we will pretty much have our result. So the only thing I didn't talk about in the drawing explanation a second ago is that strings are immutable. How are we going to perform swaps in a string? Well, we're actually going to clone the string and put it in the form of an array. So in Python, you can do that like this. It's called list comprehension. We're taking every character, adding it to a list and then setting that equal to S. So with an array like this, it's easy to swap. Now we'll declare our left pointer. It will initially be at the beginning at zero, and then we'll have an I pointer iterating over the length of S. And then we'll check for every character if it's equal to one. Let's perform a swap. In Python, that's easy. We don't even need a temporary variable. We can do it in a single line like this. S of I and S of left is going to be set to S of left and S of I. So just reversing the order of these two to swap them. And let's make sure to increment our left pointer whenever we do that. Now at the end, what do we do? Well, we want to make sure that we swap left minus one with the value at the end of the list, length of S minus one. And since we're swapping them, we have to put both of them on the left side and then both of them on the right side. So let's copy that and put it here. So this is just performing a swap between these two elements. And after we're done with that, we can return. But we can't return S. It's technically an array of strings. And we want to return a string. So we can join all of the strings within this list by doing this. This is the delimiter, an empty string. And so dot join with everything in S. This will create a string and then that's what we want to return. So let's go ahead and run this. And as you can see on the left, it works. It's also the same efficiency, but this time it just ran quicker on leak code. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.